One of you suggested that I could film a video showing all of the products I would buy first if I had to start over. It's interesting to me because it's not just a favorites video or a favorite in every category tag. I would not buy a foundation, I would not buy a bronzer, and I would not buy a brow gel. So it's not like a favorites in every category. Some of these actually required me to really think about. So if you wanna know what I picked, keep on watching. Like I mentioned in the intro, I would not buy a foundation. I just don't use foundation on a day-to-day -day basis. I only use the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Concealer in Light 40N. I have it dotted strategically around my face today. A dot here, here, and here, 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 and here, here, and here, and that's it. So just a few dots and I'm good to go. I love that this has a very blendable, stretchable formula. That's why it works so good as a foundation. Whereas for my concealer, I prefer something that really stays in place. But this, just because of the doe foot applicator, because it's just a few dollars on Ulta, it really would be my first pick for a product to kind of work as a foundation. Here's the shade Light 40N. It is quite full coverage. You don't see any of my kind of like pigmentation or freckles peeking through, but it's very blendable. It has a hydrating finish that isn't super dewy in the sense that it would pick up on, you know, texture. Sometimes overly dewy products do that. It just has a beautiful skin-like finish and it's very blendable, affordable, easy to use, and a perfect color match for my face. I'm sorry it's repetitive, but you all know what I'm gonna pick as my concealer. It's the Fit Glow Concealer in C2.5. I know that it gets boring and repetitive to keep repeating the same products over and over again, but I'm also a real person, and I just want to own the products that I truly, truly reach for on a daily basis, and nothing ever beats this as an under eye concealer, so it's the only one that I wanna spend money on. It's full coverage, it's blurring, it's hydrating without being wet looking and super dewy, it's thick, and it stays in place. It has antibacterial properties, so you can use it on blemishes, and it has the same ingredients in this concealer as Fit Glow has in the eye cream. So it has skincare benefits as well. Nothing beats it. This is Fit Glow C2.5. You can see it's less blendable than ColourPop, which I like for under my eyes. That coverage just stays in place, and it is full coverage, and it just ends up blurring your skin. I just, I can't live without it. And sadly, while that exclusive 25% off coupon code expired, my code Kate20 gets you 20% off FitGlow and it's permanent. Um, it's not an affiliate code, so I don't earn commission from it. If you wanna help me out, you can click my links, but that code is always there for you to use it and 20% off is pretty good. For brows, I had to think about this one a little bit. I was considering a brow gel. You know, I love my e.l.f. Wow brow. I love my Fit Glow brow gel. Beauty Pie makes a great one. There are just so many awesome brow gels out there, but the product that I just keep coming back to is the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer in the shade Brunette. It really is the perfect color match for me. I'm not wearing it today. I'm wearing the uh, Persona Swipe Up Brow Gel in Blonde. This just looks so natural and, you know, it's got that tiny little skinny tip. For something like $6.99 on Ulta, you just can't beat this. It's totally comparable to like an Anastasia Brow Wiz product, but way, way, way more affordable. So as much as I would love a brow gel because it keeps my brows in place, I just find that my brows really look the most natural when I'm filling them in with a pencil versus a pigmented gel. I don't have to tell you, but you know that blush <laughs> was a struggle to narrow down. So I have my like first, second, third, fourth pick <laughs> for blush. It will come as no surprise. First, can you guess? Hold on, maybe you saw it in my hands. Can you guess what blush I'm gonna pick as my first pick? Don't cheat and go to the description box. Let me know, what do you think it's gonna be? I'm sure you got it right. It's the MAC Glow Play Blush in Blush Please. The shit is so good. Oh, this is definitely the first one I would buy if I had to start over. This is certainly my most used blush. I mean, it's just what I reach for on a day-to-day -day basis because it's a neutral. It just looks like it's one with your skin because of the formula, but it still has some rosiness to it where it warms up my face. It's not too brown. It's not too orangey beige like some of the other ones I own. If you're new here, the MAC Glow Play Blush Formula is one of my all-time favorite formulas because it's basically a hybrid of a cream and a powder. 
Um, some people say it's a cream to powder, meaning it feels like a cream and then sets down. I actually don't think that's the case. Something like the Can Make Cream Cheek, that's a cream to powder. It really sets down and feels like a powder. This still has a creaminess once it's on your skin, but it also feels like a powder. It's like one of the most unique formulas I've ever tried. Very similar to the Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur, the original like Maybelline bouncy blushes, you know what I'm talking about. But I treat this as a powder, meaning I just take a brush, swirl it over, swirl it on my cheeks, you get the ease of use and the fast blendability of a powder, but you get the skin-like quality of a cream. And that's why any kind of like cream powder hybrid is just my favorite. So it's this beautiful mauve that kind of warms up on the face. You know, you have that bouncy texture where you can kind of dent it a little bit. I'm sure most of you are familiar. And on the skin, it's just a beautiful, beautiful, rose really it looks more mauve in the pan but on the skin it really is just kind of like a rosy like a warm rosy flush of color and it it has this kind of airbrushed quality to it there's a little bit of a sheen in there not a shimmer not a sparkle not a glitter it just makes your skin look so beautiful i think that this is just a phenomenal formula they have a ton of different shades this would be my first as much as I love that blush, it would get boring very quickly for me. So the next blush I would buy is actually a new one for me. It's the Persona Super Blush and Bubble. I, I would buy this because over the Dior, this is really the same thing, but it's a fraction of the price. I believe this is $22. I think the Dior is around 34, 35. So if I were starting my collection and I had to buy a bunch of products, I would go with the slightly more affordable version of what I love because it's really the same thing. It is a powder formula, um, but it is not a dry, chalky powder formula like the Essence Mosaic Blush. That's, you know, that is a little less cosmetically elegant. So you have that absolutely stunning, cool toned pink flush, and it's actually really, really sheer but it's really buildable and that's why I love it. You can just have a flush of color or you can really, really build it up. Like the Glow Play formula from MAC, it also has a little bit of a sheen to it. You can see just that kind of reflection coming through, but on the skin, it's not glittery or shimmery at all. It just looks like skin. Totally forgot I was gonna talk about brushes and tools first. So before we move on, my all-time favorite concealer sponge is the Wander Beauty Wander Cushion. I've tried the original Beauty Blender. I find it a little too firm. This just feels so squishy and soft. It just, like, I can squeeze it really easily and get into the corners of my eyes, or I can use the flat end, tap it around my face. It just kind of feels like it's already wet, so I just use this as a dry sponge, which cuts down on my time, and nothing blends my concealer better than this. I've tried blenders, I've tried sponges from Eco Tools. I've tried them from a couple different brands, but truly, I've never heard anyone talk about the Wander Beauty Wander Cushion. I've mentioned it in a few videos. You see me use it in a few videos, but this is an underrated hero product for me. I would have a hard time doing my makeup without this, so I would absolutely purchase this if I had to start over. And in terms of working with cream blushes, my favorite brush is from e.l.f. It's their airbrush stipple blush. I looked online recently and I couldn't find it anywhere. I hope it's not discontinued, but I know it's like one of their most popular brushes, so maybe it's just out of stock. I'm not sure, but if you can find it, it's the e.l.f. airbrush stipple. What's cool about it is it's a small, dense brush, but it has these little stipple hairs so that you're getting most of the product on the longer hairs, which means that it's a little bit more sheer. So it's kind of easier to work with more pigmented products with this brush. My all time favorite blush brush for powders. Nothing beats this. This is the Eco Tools 360 Sheer Face Brush. I really just wish they made a smaller version of this because you, if you look at like the circumference of the brush hairs, when it's on my cheek, it's like a little too much, you know? That's, I don't want color going all around that. I want more of a smaller area that I can then blend out. You know, I just kind of go in with like less 
Um, I don't like swipe a bunch of times and so I'm really careful about it and I apply it really lightly. It's such a loosely packed brush and it's so soft that it really can apply any pigmented product like a dream if you use a light hand. It really just makes the work easier. It certainly depends on the situation for all of these purchases and the concept of this video. Like for example, someone said like, it's the kind of thing where if your house burned down, what would you buy? But in that scenario, I probably wouldn't buy a bunch of makeup because I would be like devastated and crying and probably like living on someone's couch and makeup wouldn't be my first priority. But if we're just keeping this light and fun, I would definitely buy a third blush because I do have to have a few different colors of blush. And I can finally talk about this bad bitch again because the Bare Minerals Blonzer is coming back. I believe Kiss of Rose was already in stock as an Instagram sort of pre-launch sale, but I think it's out of stock now. And I do know the other two shades are coming back too. So this is Kiss of Rose, then they had Kiss of Copper and Kiss of Pink. This is my favorite by far. It's the darkest shade, but it's not as scary as it looks. It's this beautiful burnt terracotta with a little bit of rosiness in there, so it's not too orange. It's a powder formula, but it's very soft, very finely milled, not dry or chalky. Feels very silky, actually. And you can see all of that sheen. It's definitely more, I don't wanna say shimmery because you can't see the shimmer particles, but you can see that there's much more of a sheen to it than the others. So here, this would be my go-to when I want more of a bold, burnt kind of sunburnt cheek. I think you can see that gold shimmer coming through just really warms up the skin. So that would be kind of my like summer bronze look blush. Then MAC Glow Play would be my, you know, everyday Persona Bubble would be when I want that like flush of cool toned pink. And then I have one more. You know there were so many others I could have picked as my fourth blush. For example, I was considering the Victoria Beckham Cheeky Posh in Mini Skirt, which is this beautiful burnt brown shade. I was also considering the MAC Glow Play Blush in Heat Index, which is this bright poppy coral, but I reserve that mostly for like warmer weather. I was considering the Can Make Cream Cheek and Almond Terracotta, very similar to Victoria Beckham Mini Skirt, but a little warmer. I was also considering the Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur in Blurred Buff, which is just like an elevated bronzer basically. But when I looked at the products that I truly use and reach for the most, this was the clear winner of the number four spot. It's a powder and it is a little bit dusty in the sense that when you swirl your brush in, you definitely have to tap it off. Otherwise you'll get too much product and it's quite pigmented. But there's just something about this that's really special because of that shimmer that comes through on the skin. And it's not an exact, and it doesn't look exactly like the MAC Glow Play in Blush Please. So this one right here is M Cosmetics Venetian Rose. So as you can see here, M Cosmetics Venetian Rose is a little more mauve and a little bit more rosy than MAC Glow Play and Blush Please. Blush Please is the most neutral and the most kind of natural looking on my skin. So this just amps it up a little bit and these really are just like the four colors that I reach for most on a day-to-day -day basis. So while some of them may look a little bit similar, they just really are like the four colors that I reach for most. And so those would be the ones I buy first. My highlighter pick, easy. Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter in three. Nothing hits like this does. It is not a blinding highlight. There's no glitter, no shimmer. There's a little bit of a blurring quality. It's so incredibly skin-like. It's a perfect shade match for me. You can use it under makeup to add more luminosity to your foundation. You can mix it with your moisturizer if you wanted to. You could use it like a highlighter. It's just stunning. This is the little mini bottle in three, and it might look a little dark on my hand, but on my face, it blends in beautifully. My face is a little bit um, darker than my hand, so keep that in mind, but it just ends up being this airbrushed, soft focus glow that makes your skin look so expensive. And so this is really where I would start, specifically 
the mini version of this. Honestly, I don't have any favorite powders, so I'm gonna skip that one too. No bronzers, brow gels, foundations, or powders. Um, I use the Charlotte Tilbury one, but it's like, it's whatever, it's a powder. I do have the Say Air Set powder on the way. I think they were gonna send to me, but I don't know. I just don't really think a powder is completely essential. The next are some eyeshadow brushes. These are like the, wait, I have another one. Haha. -ha. These are the three that I use the most and they're all very affordable. First up, just to apply any kind of color kind of loosely around my lid and blend it into my crease like a one undone. I don't even know. Yeah, this doesn't have a name on it. It's a Wet n Wild brush I got on Amazon. I think it was a Wet n Wild crease brush. I don't know, it doesn't say. I bought this a long time ago. I don't know if they make it, but the point is I really like Wet n Wild brushes, so I would buy from them. Um, then I fell in love recently with this Morphe brush. I think the Garso twins recommended this. Um, it's the M433 brush. It's like a typical crease brush, but it's, it's more loose and it's a little bit more like a stipple brush. So it just does such a good job at like blending your eyeshadow. It's the kind of brush that just does the work for you. And lastly, because I always put a little bit of eyeshadow on my lower lash line, I would buy the e.l.f. smudge brush. I think I got this on Ulta. It's really soft, much softer than my MAC pencil brush. So, so, so perfect for just getting on your lower lash line, smudging eyeliner, smudging eyeshadow, whatever you want. So soft, so affordable. As an eyelash curler, uh, my new favorite is the Shiseido. I used to use the Kevin Aquan, but I ran out of the little squishy refill pads and you couldn't buy them anywhere anymore. So I just threw that out. And now I have the Shiseido and this is great. It's not like super, super curved. It's a little bit more flat. So you can really like get in all of your lashes. So this is definitely the eyelash curler I would choose. I've tried eyelash curlers from like Revlon and the drugstore, but I just never found that they really, really curled my lashes as well as like the Kevin Aquan or the Shiseido. So I would just spend my money on what I know works best and gives me the look I want. Anytime I do eye makeup, I do always put a little bit of a brown kind of gel or pencil liner on my upper water line. My all time favorite, I just found out got discontinued and it was the NYX Glide On Eye Pencil, I think Glide On or Slide On, Glide On Eye Pencil in brown perfection. Can't find it anywhere. Uh, so I think they discontinued that color, but you can still buy all of those eyeliners on the NYX website. They have a bunch of other colors. I love that formula. So creamy, glides right on, smudgeable, but then it sets, never smudges or like, you know, gets all weird, but they just don't have a lot of matte shades. They have a lot of shimmers. I'm on the hunt for a no budge brown matte eye pencil. Unfortunately, the MAC eye coal in Costa Rica smudges when I put it on the waterline, it like ends up under my eye, but the NYX never did that. So if you know of an affordable, like matte brown eyeliner that doesn't smudge, please let me know because I don't think if I were starting from scratch, I'd wanna buy Victoria Beckham. I would really want something from the drugstore. So let me know your recs. My first eyeshadow purchase is very easy. It would be the L'Oreal eyeshadow in Amber Rush. This was in my dupes video and I found it because it's a color dupe for the Kosas 10 second eyeshadow in Globe. I have to be careful because this is a little broken and it can crumble out, but look at the shine. Oh. It's so metallic and on the eyes as a one undone, it's it's like it elevates your look while still being um, natural and understated. So right there. In some lights, like right here, it looks like it's barely there. In other lights, you can see it kind of deepen but it's just so beautifully metallic. It's affordable. It's a perfect everyday shade for my personal complexion. There's just something about L'Oreal Amber Rush, man. It just, it, it does it for me. There are just so many great affordable eyeshadows. I would still just go that route. So my next purchase would be the Rimmel Wonder Cloud in Honey Drop. This I found through my dupes journey because it's a dupe for Nude Sticks Terra. It's a kind of whipped cream eyeshadow formula that is just so easy to work with. It's the most beginner friendly cream I've ever found. So right next to L'Oreal. And it's so blendable because it has this kind of like 
silicone slip to it. Like it feels like a silicone primer. So on days when I just want some like warmth to make my blue eyes pop, I always go for this one. I love it. And because it's so affordable, I would also get this shade Spiced Petal. Hold on. There we go. Spiced Petal is just a little bit more of a rose, but it's very, very soft. It just kind of is a flush of rose over my eyes in a very natural way. Obviously, if you're at all darker than I am, it probably won't show up on you, but they do have other shades. But these two are just light enough on my eyes that they're kind of like a barely there wash of color. And they're just so incredibly affordable and easy to use that I would undoubtedly buy these. If I were starting over, I would definitely need a palette, something good for travel that just gives me everything I need. And this should come as no surprise. The M Cosmetics uh, Divine Skies, is that what they're called? Yeah, Divine Skies eyeshadow palette in the shade Da Vinci. This has just been my absolute go-to. I can't get enough of this. It's neutral while still having dimension and pops of color. My favorite shade is always this one called Renaissance. Incredible chocolate meets peach. And it's a satin, but because it's a satin, it just ends up looking like a cream on the eyes. There's like a little bit of like an emollient look. It's just an incredible one and done to like make your eyes pop, add some dimension, some warmth. It looks peach in some lights. It looks brown in others. It's truly one of the best eyeshadows I've ever tried. Love this matte mustard. The mattes in this palette are so creamy and blendable. And this one also looks really good as a one and done. Oh, did I fuck that up? I think so. Yeah, so Renaissance is here and then the matte mustard is here. You can obviously use this dark brown as a liner. Then I love this kind of neutral to slightly warm matte brown. That all over the lid in the crease and under the eyes is a beautiful one and done smoky eye. You can do a little pop of champagne and that can go in the inner corners. It can go on the brow bone. It can be an all over the lid shade. You can add it on top of any of the others. And then you've got this interesting green-ish bronze gold, which kind of rounds it out and makes it a little more interesting. So to me, this is my perfect everyday palette because the shades in it are a little warmer. They're a little more rich and saturated than like the Rodin palette. I just, oof, man, I love this. I cannot get enough of it. I would undoubtedly repurchase this if I lost everything in my makeup collection. Oh, okay, I forgot. I did bring down a NYX, oh my God, it's called, no wonder I was confused. It's called the NYX Slide On, Glide On, Stay On, Definitely a Turn On, Waterproof Extreme Shine Eyeliner. Yeah, okay, so I don't know what to call that, but this is the shade Golden Bronze. I love this on the upper waterline. Look at this color. That's the kind of brown I love. It's like a shimmery orangey bronze, and on my eyes, it just makes my blue eyes pop. It's so pretty. You saw that it was just like so creamy and blendable. So this formula is the only one I've ever found that does not transfer. And I did my makeup this morning, so I've had a couple touch-ups. It looks a little crusty dusty, but I can tell that the Victoria Beckham Coco liner did kind of smudge under my waterline. So that's a bummer, but at least it's not doing anything weird. Like the upper liner still looks okay, but I would still just go with the NYX. I love the NYX. Okay, if I were starting from scratch, I would not be able to function without some glitter. So I would go to the ColourPop website and I would buy a bunch of ColourPop Super Shock shadows because they look like luxury makeup on the eyes. My favorite is the shade A Little Quirky. It's an unbelievable peachy bronze with almost blue glitter. It's like silver blue. So affordable, so impactful. It just ends up being incredible on the eyes. Honestly, as much as I wanna compare this to other high-end formulas and colors, I just don't think there's a comparison. It would probably most be similar to the Natasha Denona Chroma Crystal Topper in Peach, although this has more base pigment, and I just love this all over the eyes as like a one and done 
glitter topper. Next, I have Cosmic Charge. I found this through Amanda Z. She raves about this all the time. And it's more of like an antiqued bronze. Definitely a little darker, more glittery. Hopefully this is still available. You guys know ColourPop. They discontinue things constantly. So Cosmic Charge is here. Little deeper, more bronze. A little quirky is much more of like a peach with silver blue glitter. Cosmic Charge is like an antiqued bronze with silver glitter. And I would also have to get Ritz because it's such a beautiful sheer topper. So you're not gonna get much color payoff. It just kind of will add shimmer to whatever you've got on. It just makes the skin have this wet look shine that is so nice on its own and so nice over eyeshadow. So these would be the three ColourPop Super Shock shadows that I would buy. So I would probably stop there. I wouldn't need anything else, um, but if I wanted to buy more, if I had room in my budget after losing everything, the next shadow I would buy would be a kind of like night out smoky eyeshadow. So I would definitely buy Max um, Extra Dimension Eyeshadow in Amorous Alloy. I'm holding it like a little tiny baby because it fell out of the pan, so I have to be careful. It's interesting because it's called an extra dimension eyeshadow, but it's not like metallic or glittery like the name would suggest. It's really just like a soft satin. The red color in this brown just makes my eye color pop. It's the eyeshadow that I wear when I wanna look like cool and sexy and kind of like effortless. It's my favorite smoky eye. So on my hand, Amorous Alloy. It's very similar to the uh, original Kosas 10 second eyeshadow in Element. It's just a reddish brown that looks so good. See that shine? It's just beautiful all over the lid, the crease, and the lower lash line. A recent can't live without favorite is the Dior Mono Eyeshadow in Beige Midza. I would pick this over the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize Cream Eyeshadow in Oyster Pearl because a powder formula like this just lasts longer. It doesn't fade or crease. You know, I love the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize formula, but they do fade, they do crease, they're a cream. This one knocked my socks off. Another Amanda Z recommendation that went viral, at least in my community. I saw so many people buying it because of her, and I'm so happy I bought it. I would really, really, really miss this in my collection. Beautiful, soft, powder finish. It's like this amorphous shade of sometimes a platinum, sometimes a bronze. On the skin, it's just really, really special. See how in this light, it just kind of looks like a, like a gold bronze. In this light, you get something much smokier. And it just, depending on the light, it looks different. And that's what Oyster Pearl from Charlotte Tilbury does for me too. It kind of morphs according to the light. And I just think it's, oh, so stunning. Okay, my final eyeshadows are an either or situation. I'm not sure between the three of these what I would pick, but I would want some kind of very warm bronze that would function as a one and done eyeshadow, something that looks kind of different on the lid and the crease and the lower lash line, depending on the light. I have three different ones. My OG fave is MAC Woodwinked. It's so special. It looks different in different lights. It looks like you're wearing three different eyeshadows at once. So maybe I would go for this one. Such a stunning bronze. I love this all over the eyes. It looks good on everybody. And next to Dior Beige Mitza, you can see it's much warmer. So with my particular complexion, I do love something that's quite warm as well. You know, that just really kind of emphasizes my eye color while still looking quite natural-ish, but I also have the Shantakai Luminescent Eye Shade in Golden Copper or Lion. Very similar. But this is less of like a metallic and more of a metallic eyeshadow with a spray of glitter on top. When you touch it, it almost feels like a powder and a gel. And when you apply it, it's just a little darker and warmer, more saturated. So that would also be a really great option to have as the bronze alongside these different shadows. My last kind of either or bronze shade is the Wander Beauty Double Date Eyeshadow Duo in Smitten and Swoon. What's cool about this is it's multifunctional because it has a cream on a bottom, a kind of metallic on top, 
and a mirror on the bottom as well. So you get this really thin kind of Vaseline-y feeling cream. Um, on me, it does not crease or budge at all, but my friend Tiffany, she's Tiff by Tiffany on Instagram and she has a YouTube channel. Um, she just tried this and said it creased really badly on her, so makeup is so subjective. Take everything with a grain of salt. So here's the cream, again, such a nice bronze, just soft satin, and I will apply that here. I accidentally blended it into the Chantecaille Golden Lion, but you can see it's much less glittery. It's more of a, just like a creamy satin bronze. And then the powder is called Smitten, and it's this gorgeous kind of flaky foiled powder topper. So I'll put that here. Would I need all of these bronzes? Absolutely not. I just honestly don't know right now which one I would reach for. I like the multifunctional quality of the Wander Beauty Double Date, but I love the depth of the Chantecaille Lion. But on the eyes, MAC Woodwinked is so transformative. I think I might go with MAC Woodwinked. It's just served me right for over a decade. The mascaras might come as a shock to you. For years on my channel, pretty much all I've ever used is the Thrive Liquid Lash Extension Mascara. It's a tubing mascara, but you do have to pay shipping, so it comes out to about $31. And when you're just like constantly using up mascara, it kind of sucks to always pay that price. So recently I went on a whole tubing mascara journey on Instagram, tried a whole bunch of different drugstore tubing mascaras. Sometimes it's tough because none of them are marketed as a tubing mascara for the most part, but my two faves now are just as good as Thrive. And it is, first of all, the one I'm wearing today, the Maybelline. It's the Maybelline Lash Sensational Sky High in like washable black. This is the exact same mascara as Thrive on me. Everybody's different. And in my opinion, mascara is the most subjective product. So what works for some of my best friends does not work for me and vice versa. So take everything with a grain of salt but very, very similar spiky plastic wand, just like the Thrive, and it performs exactly the same for me. It does have this kind of like weirdly bendy applicator. My friends didn't like it. I personally don't mind it, but on my eyelashes, it does what the Thrive does. It lengthens them with the tubing mascara. <clears throat> it separates them, so your lashes look really kind of like lifted and lengthened, very much like a doe eye kind of look. And it holds a curl really well, doesn't flake or smudge on me, and it removes easily with warm water. So no more Thrive, which is sad because I just purchased a new bottle of Thrive before I found these two absolute holy grail drugstore mascaras. So I'll just use up all three of these and then I will only be purchasing the drugstore ones from now on because I'm so excited about them. The next one serves a different function, which is why I would want this one as well. Although if I had to start with one, I'd probably do this one first because it's a little more natural looking. It's a little more focused on length, lift, and separation. The L'Oreal Age Perfect Lash Magnifying Mascara in easy to remove waterproof is the perfect one for a more bold, voluminized, black, dramatic look. Now, this isn't marketed as a tubing mascara, um, and it's weird to have the waterproof version say, easy to remove, washable, waterproof, that comes off with water. You're like, huh, how does that work? Anyways, don't worry about it. Get the waterproof version. I heard that it's hard to find right now. I think it went viral on TikTok and that's why it's sold out. So you wanna look for the tube that has the blue waterproof label on it. And what's crazy is it is a tubing mascara. It comes off with water and it's not a plastic spiky wand like most tubing mascaras. It's a classic, more like fluffy, bristle brush. And it's a drier formula for a tubing mascara, so it really concentrates the color at the lash line and the root of your lashes, which makes your lashes look really, really dark and volumized. So this is kind of like my dramatic mascara. This is my more daytime mascara. Both are tubing, neither flake or smudge. Both remove easily with warm water. What more could you ask for? No surprises here. I have eight lip products. Would I get all of these shades? No. Probably not, but I'm gonna tell you my favorites if I had to start over, what my like 
core first lip purchases would be. Obviously I'm a broken record on this one, the Fickle Lip Serums, duh. It was very hard for me to narrow down these three, but I picked Beach Glow, Gospel, and Full. First we have Fit Glow Beach Glow. It's just a perfect everyday shade. For me, it's just a perfect sheer shimmery copper that goes with everything. It just adds this kind of warmth and like sun-kissed, luminous glow to the lips, if that is even a thing. Um, I just love it. It goes with everything, so nourishing and comfortable. This shade just works with every kind of look, so that would be my first purchase. Gospel is my perfect My Lips But Better shade. I usually don't apply that much, so it's coming across as like quite bold and pink. But you can just kind of pare it down and it's just such a beautiful like flushed lip look. Lastly, a recent Fit Glow fave is the Lip Serum in Full, which is just kind of this perfect chocolate brown. The stopper came out on mine, so it's a little messy, so hopefully this is okay. Mmm, so cute. Sometimes a nice brown, just it just hits, you know? I just think it's like a cool look and it makes me feel confident and interesting. If I were starting from scratch, I would definitely need some kind of a nude lip. My perfect shade of a nude lip that's light so that it looks kind of like a nude, but isn't too fleshy, doesn't wash me out, is the Rowan Liquid Lip Balm in Remy. Yep, Remy. One of my favorite liquid lip balm formulas. It's thinner, but it's still cushiony. It still has that kind of gel-like coating over your lips. Slight peppermint scent, unlike the Fit Glow ones that have a kind of like earthy, natural vanilla. This is a little bit of a peppermint. And this is my go-to nude for a smoky eye. It's one of John's favorite lip products on me. It's just so nourishing, so comfortable. It's just a light beige that's not too pink, not too yellow. I was gonna include the shade Charlie, which is my most used, but that is so incredibly similar to Fit Glow Gospel and Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk, so I'm not including that one. Because I cannot live without my Charlotte Tilbury Happy Kiss and Pillow Talk. Oh, this formula. I love the way this feels. It's my second favorite lip formula of all time behind the Ficlo Lip Serums. Has a gorgeous like sweet scent and it just is a thick twist up balm. I love it. It's so thick, so cushiony. I have a dedicated review of these on my channel and on my Instagram where I swatch, I think, five or six shades on my lips. Sure, the packaging gets messy. You can't twist it down, so be careful of that. But I don't mind that at all. Mm, I love the comfort and the nourishment of this. It does feel like a really thick, occlusive balm, and so I just find myself really gravitating towards these. And this particular shade, Pillow Talk, I think is the best version of Pillow Talk in the Charlotte Tilbury line. A lot of the others are too pink or too muted gray or too mauve, but this one is the perfect kind of like my Lips But Better Rose. Oof, I just think that they nailed this one. And finally, the last product I would buy if I had to start my makeup collection over from scratch would be the Naturium Phyto Glow Lip Balms. These have kicked out some other formulas. Formulas. These have made it into my top five all-time favorite lip formulas for a reason. They are affordable. You can get them at Target. They feel like the original Bite Agave lip mask, so they're very thick. They're quite hard to squeeze out of the tube, so be aware of that, but it doesn't bother me. They have that amazing Bite Agave lip mask kind of sweet sugar scent. They come in a range of beautiful sheer shades. These truly smooth over lip lines and make your lips look like glass. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous appearance. It's just the most like flattering lip formula I've ever seen. One thing to keep in mind, I was having a conversation with a bunch of followers on Instagram who uh, basically validated my experience. Some of the tubes you squeeze and a big air bubble comes out and you can see the difference here. Those are both brand new, used exactly the same amount of times, but Jam apparently always comes like half full. 
So if that's something that bothers you, keep that in mind. But you know, these are just a few bucks, so it could be worse. I love the metal applicator because it feels cooling on the lips, really comfortable. And it's not a squeezy tube that like shoots out a bunch of product and gets everywhere. It's kind of hard to squeeze out. So this is Petal. Watch how this smooths over lip lines like a filter. So many people told me how thick and occlusive and nourishing and comfortable this was, uh, but no one told me that it kind of just like makes your lips look so much younger and so much more flattering. So I, I cannot get enough of these. I'm blown away. And if I were starting again, I would want some kind of like milky baby pink to go with that Persona bubble blush. And this would definitely be my pick. Heads up, I don't know if it's doing it, but if you do over apply, it can get a little gloopy because it's so thick, but I just wanted to like show you how smoothing it was, but you know, just don't over apply. Next, I would get the shade Lychee, which is a beautiful, bright candy apple red, but it's very sheer. So all the other colors I have aside from Naturium Petal are like quite neutral, wearable, natural lip colors. Now for the Naturium ones, I'm getting into a little bit of a brighter situation. You know me, I'm not a red girl, but with this I am. I've been wearing this to all of my work meetings lately and I love it. See, it starts out very bright. But it just becomes the most beautiful, sheer flush of red. This is my favorite, favorite red lip product I've ever owned. This is making me a red lip girl. Lastly, I have the shade Jam, which is the tragically underfilled one. Naturium, come on. And it looks scary and dark, but it's really wearable for me, my complexion. Ugh, oh, I love that. Quite similar to Fit Glow Gospel, but you know, they give me different things. These are just crazy good, crazy good. So if I were starting my makeup collection over from scratch, I would totally pick up a few of these because you know they're affordable, you can get them from Target, they come in a bunch of different shades. There's a peach one I'm interested in, there's more of a nude. I mean, I basically want them all because the colors are so flattering. The pigmentation level is so perfect for my preferences. Before we go, here's what I wanna know from you. If you had to pick one blush and one lip product, both the product and the shade, what would you pick? I would really love to know what everyone's number one. You know that like MAC Glow Play and Blush Please was my number one. The Fit Glow Lip Serum, that was my number one. What are your number ones? I would love to see what everybody picks in the comment section below. Thank you to the subscriber uh, who sent me this video idea. I thought it was really great. Let me know if you have any other suggestions. I would love to hear some things because I've been doing some more content recently that I had planned and I'm running out of ideas, except I do have the one and done eyeshadow video coming soon and a video with John where we do the hot ones challenge and he interviews me kind of rapid fire questions. So that'll be very interesting. Let me know any other suggestions you have and if you made it this far, thank you so much. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you next time.